right, so we got the uh, veneer on the face of the vanity. It's all set. Hardwood edge looks pretty nice. But I'm running out of time. I need to get this done. So I got two doors that I have to make and make them stable to be around the steam. So a friend of mine had a really good idea. He'd just been up to the Harry Potter studio. And he says, I got exactly what you need, Jim. I got a magic wand. So I have my magic wand, supposedly. It's got a finish line flag on it. That means the job's gonna get finished. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Wow, that was cool. Two new doors. They're hinged and everything. Nah, just messing with you. I'm gonna show you how we really did it. All right, the first step to do this process is to mill your stock up. Now I'm gonna have a two and a quarter frame going all the way around the door, which is gonna be a place to put the European hinges in and also give me the stockers on the other side. This makes it for a very, very solid board that's impossible to bend compared to one that's there's a lot of flex in that piece. They're similar in size. So this is 100% more rigid than just laying a piece of plywood in there. Now, of course, we're going to get honeycomb inside here, but we're going to go over that for a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy all these corners together right now, get them all glued up where they go, then we'll start cutting the honeycomb. We'll come back to it. So hang on for a second, and we'll be right back. Formica for the front and the back. And you don't have to use a brand new sheet. You can use scrap that you have in the shop. That's what I've used. Notice this is one color. There's a couple different colors throughout this. I'm just using scrap pieces. The reason for that is the veneer will go over the top of the mica. The mica has to go through the thickness sander after we get this glued up. So if you're noticing that we have different colors, that's the reason why. You're never going to see it. I'm using it for a thickness flattening laminate. So this is very exciting. We have the Fasco that we're gonna to use to glue up. We have a small notch trowel. We're gonna use the small notches in it. Now you remember when you were a kid and you used to play with Play-Doh and stuff like that? I think I have the best life because I get to play with Play-Doh and get paid for it. All right, so I have my lines laid out and I'm just spreading in between the lines. Get that spread real quick, nice and neat. Don't need a ton of uh, product on there. Remember, this is epoxy. So then, once you have that set, set your door panel, your frame right on top of that. Okay, see that's bonding down real nice. Then I have my honeycomb. I have two pieces of honeycomb to get the thickness. The frames are 600 thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna set that in accordingly. I'm leaving just a little bit of a gap all the way around. Now the frames are 600 thousandths of an inch. Well, it's impossible to get honeycomb to that dimension. So what I did was took two pieces, a quarter and a three eighths, and I milled the face off the three eighths. And that gives me, brought it down just under 600 thousandths of an inch through the thickness sander. That'll give me, it gives me exactly what I need to put in there. Now the reason I only did it on one piece, is you can see the scrub comes off from the honeycomb when you sand it. So see how this side still has a cloth on it? That's fine because I put my epoxy in here and then I'm going to coat this the light coat, same way as we did the other piece. Then I'm gonna bond this directly to the top. 
So I'm going to put my side that I sanded down so it's in the center. Sometimes it's helpful to have them labeled or numbered so because this is a different size dimension door in the center because it's a little taller than it is wide. But that was no big deal to turn it around like that. So now I have my top piece of Formica ready to go. And instead of actually putting the glue on the Formica, I'm going to put it right on the frame here. Now if you notice, I'm not being extremely careful with how the glue goes over the edge because everything's going to get trimmed down in size. And you can do this in the comfort of your own home. Just pay attention and watch how I'm doing it. Okay, now see that's pretty good and consistent. It's over everything. It's epoxy everywhere. And I'll just run around the edge and make it a little easier for myself to trim. You should take a putty knife and do that. So when you run the router, it's not hitting a whole bunch of epoxy. Just do a, just check, make sure that you have every spot. I saw a little spot there that I missed. So make sure everything's wet and coated. This Fasco product is a phenomenal product. If you start using it, you'll really like it. You'll find that you can use it for all different sorts of um, projects and actually have a good time with it. So that's one door laid up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the other door right on top of it. But I'm running a little bit low in epoxy, so I'm going to mix them up and we'll be right back. So you can see this is the second door. I'm going to do it the same way, but you notice I taped it down so it doesn't move. It's taped over the first one. Why do 500 pounds twice when I do just 500 pounds once and stack the two doors on top of each other? That's why we're stacking instead of individually doing it. And ultimately, I think when you put the, the this table is a flat table that's been poured with resin before it was before it had the formica put on top of it. So I know my table is really flat. I know everything that I put on it is going to come out really flat. I think when you put all of the weight on one piece, or one combined piece, I think ultimately in the end, you actually get a flatter project. I don't have any scientific proof of that, of course, but that's just my feeling. Now, very cool, huh? Done with the epoxy, take off the gloves. I already have my flat board resting right here. And just so things don't shift, what I'm going to do is just put a clamp on this side to hold the whole thing from shifting. I'm just going to start the compression anyway. Now, 53 pounds, 106. I'm not going to do the math on that one, but I know now we're at 212 pounds on there. These are 70, 70, 140, 210, 280. So 500 pounds of weight. Let that settle come out perfect. All right, so I uh, pulled all of the weights off the panels. Came out really nice and lightweight. So as you remember, the Formica was oversized, the laminate. So right now I'm just gonna trim that off all the way around and get it ready to put the edge banding on. So I'm using an offset router, just makes it a little more comfortable to do.
Okay, very cool. That's is all it takes to get the excess edge off. I just run those, sand them a little bit, and get them prepped to size. And then what we're gonna do is put the hardwood edge all the way around, like I said. So the next time, next step will be to get that set up and get it ready for glue. All right, so the edge banding is on. Put that on, we ran the parts through the thickness sander. So everything's ready for the fun part, which is the veneer work. And we're gonna do that now. And I'm gonna go over the tools that we use and the process that we do to make it all stick. So first thing we have to remember is what we're gonna use for contact cement. Now you go down to the hardware store, buy DAP, spread it on there, and it's gonna come out like, you know what. So we use an aerosol can, which is filled with basically laughing gas and contact cement. So this is why it's the fun part. This is Lion's Grip, and it sticks like crazy. And I'm gonna show you how to put that on. You buy the can, you buy the gun with it. And you reuse this gun, even though you're changing cans. Basically, when you start, make sure you got a good clean spray going. And then go over it just like you were putting on spray paint. See how nice and neat and smooth that came out? That's it. If you'll notice, I have that tape down. No dirts get coming up from the sacrificial panel. Now we've got that all applied in one direction. We're going to go in the other direction and do what we call cross hatching. It's a refreshing smell. All right, so now we're going to use the J roller, which has got a nice rubber roller on it. And the reason we use this is to flatten the contact cement. So now we just simply go over it like this. And if you'll notice the difference in the appearance after I've rolled it, it's flatter, which is what we want. It knocks down any of the bubbles, makes everything nice and smooth which we like. It's also going to allow the veneer to look and lay smoother. Then we roll the veneer the same way. Make sure it's nice and flat. And that part's done. So we're going to put that away. Now we're going to go around and pull all of the tape off, which the tape basically left the edge clean. So I'm not getting contact cement on the sides. So now you can see how nice and clean that is. Much easier than covering the whole thing with contact cement and then having to clean it off later. It takes a few seconds to tape it out. Saves you 20 minutes of time of cleaning up contact cement. If you don't get it all off, it ends up in your finish. We don't need that. We'll do it like the pros. We pretend to be pros. Okay, everything's, all the tape's pulled. Got a nice little wad here. Sticks. Now, I understand this is a small piece. I'm going to show you. If you're doing a much larger piece of veneer, you obviously need something to keep it from sticking down in the wrong place. I also forgot to pull the tape out of the uh, socket holes for the hinges. Do that right now. Beautiful. See how easy that was? Nice and clean in there. No finish problems, nothing. All right. Take your clean dowels. I have a whole bunch of these. You lay them on the surface like this. Nice, neat, even. Okay. Now. I can't in inadvertently stick my veneer down in the wrong place. I 
look at how pretty this veneer is. We want to do it right the first time. So we'll set it right on top, like so. You can adjust it now any way you want to adjust it. See, it's not sticking anywhere. So I'm going to adjust it square. And I'll start this side down. See, I'm just using my thumb, just pressing it down like this. Okay, you move, move your dowels over. Continue to just smooth it out. Look at how nice and smooth that is now. No wrinkles, no issues, square, it's good. So now we're gonna cut the excess off before we hammer it down. Now I got almost all of the excess off. Now I'll show you how I put down veneer. In the old days, so maybe 20 years ago, you, you could go anywhere and buy a veneer hammer. Well, they're harder to get now. So what I did is I made up my own veneer hammers. Basically took a nailing hammer, cut the top off, put a cold chisel on it, polish that edge up really smooth. When you use a veneer hammer, this is going to press the two together. So as I'm rolling on, now you can see I'm coming to my edge. If I hadn't cut that edge off, I wouldn't really know where to stop. Now, you can almost see the shine difference between where I've hammered it and where I haven't. So I'm putting pressure on the whole piece and pushing it across. I forgot to pay the electric bill again. The lights just went out. Let me turn them back on. But if we don't roll the timer ahead, we end up losing our lights. So. Okay, now trust me, that is exactly like a piece of glass now. So again, don't go over your edge because you'll break it off. All right, so we're at the point where we're going to start spraying everything, put the Isolante coat on. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk to you all later.